All right, guys, let's continue. So first, let's deal with this dialogue. To make this, uh, the size of the dialogue a little larger, all we do is we call the dialogue, so dialogue, and then we say get window, and then we set the layout. Now, this takes in the width and the height as arguments. So to set that, we simply say linear layout, because that's the, that's the root element we're using. And then we say layout params, and then we say match parent. And both of them we want to match parent, so we can copy, uh, we can duplicate this with Control D after highlighting, and we can put our comma in the middle. And that's it. That's all we have to do to make the dialog larger. All right. Now we go back to our if statement. So right now we're just showing this dialog, but let's actually do the the work of the dialog which is to begin with fetching the image so we say uri uri is equals to data which got passed in right here it's the data that we got and uh, that we came back to the app with data dot get data so uri stands for uniform resource locator and essentially it's used to identify a, f uh, a resource in this case a file or more specifically, in this case, the image. All right, and having this URI, we can then get a bitmap. So bitmap, and I'll call it bitmap, is equals to media store. Okay, that came a little quick, but either way, media store dot images dot media. Then we call dot get bitmap, and we pass in get content resolver and our uri so what this does this whole line of code is it simply takes the uri and it turns it into a bitmap and having a bitmap we can then simply set it so bitmap dot set image bitmap or oh, sorry image dot set image bitmap bitmap so image is our image view in our dialog and now it will have the image that you come back to your app with all right, we have an error here. It says unhandled exception. So it wants to be able to do something if a file not found exception occurs. To deal with this, we simply come to this light bulb and we surround with try catch. Simple as that. And now we have our, uh, we've dealt with that. All right, next thing we can do is we can get the storage reference. So having set the image now we actually want to upload to the to the backend so let's go all the way to the top and underneath this fab fabis auth we'll go ahead and create our storage reference and i'll simply call it sref i'll initialize it here sref is equals to firebase storage dot get instance dot get reference and then we say dot child images dot child auth dot get current user dot get uid so i'll just write this then i'll explain and finally dot child img for image and i'll concatenate a new random and then dot next int and within the brackets i'll write 10000 so first let me break this down so it's a very long line of code so let's break it there and there and there so all the child methods and now let's explain so the storage reference is quite similar to oh first let's terminate here the storage reference is quite similar to our database reference that we had in our register activity. And as you remember from that, what we did is we took the reference, let's start at the very first one. We created the reference and then every time we saved the child, it was creating a table. So here we created a table called users and then back down
here we created another database reference and it went it said the child current user to get your id so we created uh, uh, another json object now for the particular user and then finally we put in our our data like so now we're doing something similar with our storage reference so first we get the reference and this gives us the root the very first uh, point of our our directory our storage in the firebase and then when we say dot child images instead of a table this time it creates a directory or more commonly called a folder so this will create our first folder and we could store our images here in actual fact we could even store it at the very root at the very beginning but that's a bit messy so we create a folder images and we could store there but that's still a bit uh, and disorganized so we create another folder and this time it's the user id so we get the current user and we get their unique id and then finally this last child is the actual name of the image so i'm just going to call it image and then to give each one some uniqueness i've created a new random integer between 0 and 10,000. It's a bit of code, it's a bit, a bit, a quite a bit of logic, but we'll see it in action when we run the code. Okay, moving on. Now that we have our storage reference, let's go all the way to our dialog and make use of this button. Next, set on cancelled, no, set cancelled on touch outside will be false so that they don't go messing with the app as the upload task is going on. And then finally, after doing all that, we can show them the dialog. Alright, and now we can upload our file. So we say sref, which is our storage reference, and we say put file. And we throw in the URI. Simple as that. There's an error. Variable is accessed from inner class, must be final, no problem. Hold down control, click the variable, there it is, and simply type final in front of the declaration. Final URI URI. Okay, so as you know now from using Firebase this past few this past few tutorials, we could leave it like this. We could simply do the task which is put file throw in the, the file, in this case the URI, and that could be all. But we know better than that. So we should always add an incomplete listener. Then we terminate there. And in the brackets, new incomplete listener. And here we are. So on complete, we will have our if statement. If task is successful, then what we want to do is we want to upload the entry itself. So remember, what we've done here just deals with the image. It puts the image in the backend, but that's not all. We still have to upload the body, upload the title, and as I'll show you in a bit, upload the download URL. So if the task of uploading the image to begin with is successful, we can then move on to those other, those other tasks. And to do that, let's start by saying progress dialog dot set message to posting entry so we are done uploading the image but we still don't want them to go messing with the app we will now switch our our energies to posting the entry itself so it will still be the same dialogue but it will be serving a slightly different purpose okay so posting entry and then we grab our sref once more and we say get download url so i'll do a bit of explanation before i move on as soon as you put a file into your storage, into your Firebase storage, you get a download link can be generated, actually is generated, a download link is generated that allows you to access that file. So actually if you took that link and you throw it into a browser, it would lead you to the file that you just uploaded. And that makes sense, it's useful because if you're putting something in, the bar, in your storage, most likely you'll want to be able to access it later. So they provided us with this method, get download URL, which does exactly that. It gets the download URL that was that was uh, created once you uploaded your file. So this takes some time, so we can say add on success listener, new on success listener, and now we can start creating our variables. 
So we'll start with that download URL since we are here. String download URL is equals to string dot value of and within here we say URI which is what was passed to us in this on success. So string download URL is equals to string dot value uh, value of URI will give us our download link. Okay, next string title string is equals to title our edit text in the dialog dot get text dot to string basic stuff. We duplicate and we change that to body so we have string body string and we change this to the body edit text. Okay, that's fine. Next thing we want to do is to upload all of these to our database. So the file has been put in our storage, these details will go to the database. And to do that we now have an opportunity to learn a new technique and that is using a map. So here in our register activity we uploaded everything individually. We took our database reference, we said dot child, we gave the name of the object, in this case of the data the data item in this case username and then we set the value so we did them one at a time and for email which is fine if it's just one or two three is also not that many but it's always good to learn a more efficient way of doing things and that efficient way is using a map so go ahead and type a map entry map you may need to import this if it's not there but just press alt enter for that is equals to new hash map and how this works is you take the map and you give it key value pairs. So we say put and we can say title and here we throw in the title string. I'll duplicate this four times. This one will be the body and of course this will be the body string. This next one will be the image URL. And this will be the download URL and then finally we need to know when each entry comes in so this will be time and then this will be server value dot timestamp so Fabis through this uh, through this variable timestamp is able to tell us the exact time data entered the database okay so there's our map and now we can put that into our database. So first let's create a database reference. And I'll call it DB. And this is equals to Firebase database dot get instance dot get reference as we did before. And then we can have our child. So child, we can call the table entries. And then dot child. So just as we did before, we want to differentiate them by saying user ID, so auth dot get current user dot get UID. And we can terminate there. Once again, I'll break this down, so there and there. So what this does, it will first create this table and then it will create the, it will use the particular user's ID so that we can differentiate uh, one person's entry from another person's entry but that's not enough though it's not enough to differentiate one person's entry from another user's entry because there'll be many entries right so we need to we need to also differentiate each individual entry belonging to this person from all the other ones that he posts we need in short a primary key now in traditional sql you'd probably have auto increment or something like that to make your primary key firebase provides us with its own method of doing the same thing so we can say string and we can say key is what i'll call it and this is equals to db dot push and then we further run dot get key so this this bit of code creates for us the primary key and then we just simply have to say so we need another another database reference i'll call this one entry db and it's simply equal to db and then another child and this time the we put key as the child all right 
and now we can say ntdb dot update children so since we are doing many at the same time we use update children instead of set value and this takes in two variable uh, two arguments the first one is the the map we created entry map and the second one is a completion listener so i'll just start typing new completion listener and it should be the first one that shows up database reference dot completion listener gives us that bunch of code and here we can do our usual if statement so if this time it gave us a database error variable so we'll use that we'll say database error is equivalent to null which is the same as saying if there is no error and if that is the case we get rid of our dialog else we still get rid of our dialog so actually it'll be better if i put this out because it's happening in either case the only difference here is i will throw a toast and the message will be error and i can say database error oh, concatenate database error dot to string yeah that's that so having written that bunch of code there's quite a bit of testing to do i'm sure so let's find out if we made any errors i'm going to run this and we'll see what we get all right there's the app it's running so i'm going to click my plus button it's taken me to my gallery very good i'm going to select an image and it's taken me back to the app and opened my dialogue excellent so you'll notice that my dialogue may look a bit different from yours the i had tested it earlier and i saw that it was a little off it wasn't really looking quite nice so i changed it i'll post this in the i'll post this new xml in the description so all you need to do is go to your diary dialog and just copy paste just copy paste the full thing replace everything here with what i give you in the in the description okay back to this so i'm going to go ahead oops let's go back i'm going to go ahead and put a title i'll just put hello and i'll put something in the body hello i am emo and then i'll hit save okay so there's my first dialog or rather there's my dialog with the uploading image title and then it has changed to posting entry but it's done in the message so i made an error there we'll fix that no problem all right it's dismissed the dialog but it's not dismissing the progress dialog let's go to the back end and see what's happening there okay good in the back end it's actually posted it's posted the entries which is fantastic so it seems i've forgotten to write uh, progress dialog or dismiss but that's fine we'll fix that anyway let's take a look at what we got so we have our entries and in fact we should go line by line with the code here's our database reference and the first thing we did was we created a table called entries and that's what we see right here and then we say dot child to the current user's uid and that's what we have right here and then we used the push method to create a unique key for this particular entry this is that unique key of course to use it we had to create another database reference so database reference this dot child key and it led to this and then finally after that we said entry db this latest one entry db dot update children with this entry map that has all our data so let's take a look at that we open this and there it is hello i am emo here's the link which we'll take a look at in a moment here's the time it entered and here's the title this has worked quite well all right Let's take a look at this now. So I'm going to copy this link. It's very long. 
before I do anything with it, let's go over to storage and I'll open this images folder that's been created which by the way that's good that it's been created so we know our let's go up this is uh, this line of code worked so firebase storage and then it created our first folder called images the next thing was to create and a folder inside of that for the current user so we open this and there's that folder very good forget forget about this it was a test i was doing earlier then if we go inside that folder we find our image excellent so here's the image that we created and now if we click that image or better yet if we come here and we paste this we press enter we get the image wonderful so all of this has worked perfectly very very glad right so let's make a few changes then now that we've seen it works let's uh, polish it up a bit first thing this should have been set title not set message okay next if we go all the way to the top i'm going to just grab my href from there and cut it and instead i'll put it right here just above the area where i start using it inside my save dot on my save buttons on click listener the reason i'm doing this is because i don't use this naming convention i'm choosing uh, i'm putting image img and then putting a random number between 10,000 and 0 but that although it's unlikely could still lead to conflicts and if you have two images with the same name one will get overwritten so I'll get rid of that and instead I'll put URI dot get last path segment. So this should give it some uniqueness. Okay, next thing is that dialog. It kept on going and it should have disappeared. So let's see where we should put that. So this is the last time it should do anything when it says posting entry. And then this yes here we go so in my if statement i finished i checked whether the database error was equals to null and then i left it blank what i should do here is progress dialog dot dismiss no need for double termination there we go so those are the three things now when we run it i'm sure it will be a bit better but we've made such good progress. So we are finally at the point where we're actually creating our entries. The final step and the very last thing we need to do for this app is to read those entries. So we'll do that in the next video. Let's stop here.